Hey there! Welcome back to Reddit Dating, best channel for cheating stories. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel for more spicy stories. Should I 48M tell my wife 4-4F that I received a tape of her in the mail? For a way. This is an odd thing. Wife and I have been married 20 years. I've never suspected her of cheating and our sex life has been outstanding. First of the year, I receive a package in the mail. It's a DVD addressed to me and a type note that says, your eyes only. It's my wife having sex, separately, with three guys. She was younger, much younger, based on body and appearance and hairstyle it was around the time we were going out, either before, during, or after we were engaged, she grew her hair longer for the wedding and kept it that way to first I've no idea who sent it to me other than one of those three guys in the DVD, none of which I know. I'm assuming it's one of my wife's ex. Second I've no idea why they sent it. Are they trying to say she was screwing around on me? The tape isn't time stamped, so I don't have a frame of reference. She kept her hair short for years until we were engaged so it could have been during a block of time, certainly before we dated. And also what are they trying to achieve if this was taken before we dated? I know my wife had other partners. Hell, I had three times the partners she did before we married, but that was 20 years ago, I think we're past that. But apparently this person or persons isn't. The whole thing is strange. I'm not sure what's going on. I haven't told my wife. I'm not sure how she would take it. She's very sexual and adventurous, but don't think she'd like the idea of her past catching up to her. But I don't think I'll get to the bottom of this unless I tell her. Edit. Update. I'm overwhelmed by the responses. Thank you for your interest. I did speak to my wife yesterday afternoon. Some mentioned letting her watch it in private and I gave her that option. She did and we talked at length. Some of it is a bit clearer now. The two amateur-looking videos are two roommates, taken on the same night. That's why the camera doesn't move and that's why the room is the same. I asked why the bed looks different, and she replied the sheets were a bit messy, so they changed them before they had another go. The other is a boyfriend she dated when her and I met, before we actually started dating. She knows this man is friends with one of the before-mentioned roommates, and thinks it's him who got the three videos together and sent them to us. Why she admits that last summer he tried connecting with her on Facebook. When she did, he tried to make it sexual again, so she stopped. She thinks he sent the DVD to cause an issue with us. For the first time, I now have doubts. Her answers are logical that seem a bit off to me. And honestly, I may be just upset that she did two guys in one night I know it was 20 years ago, but that's still hard to take call me shallow if you want. Also, she didn't seem shaken by the DVD or the fact I had it, merely irritated that this person sent it. I had the idea she rather I didn't have it, but now that I did, oh well. It still leaves many questions unanswered such as why the tapes are from 96-97 and the DVD was made in 2013, but I'm just getting it now. That may be minor, but it may be everything. Plus, how does this gentleman know where I live? Facebook doesn't give you that information. Being in contact with someone does so now, you see why I have doubts. Thanks to you all for your concern and feedback. I love my wife and cherish her, and her past is her past, but for some reason it's slapping us in the face right now. I will take some time between the two of us to figure out what is truly going on. Edit 22. I want to clarify something. I've been getting a lot of feedback, mostly negative, where everyone is irritated with me that I'm upset with my wife for being with two men in the same night. None of my business. It was 20 years ago I should man up, that sort of thing. Look, I said it was hard to take. Most men understand their partner was with different people before them. But seeing their spouse with two men on the same night is hard to handle. I didn't say I was changing my view of her or leaving or any other angst you want to put on me. It's just a difficult thing for a married man to see and realize. I'll get past it, but it's not an easy thing. And for everyone who says it was 20 years ago lighten up, I challenge you to sit back, grab a beer and watch two young men have intercourse with your wife on the same night and see how you feel about it. Frustrated at best. You won't love her less, but you'll not feel great afterwards, trust me. So thanks for everyone calling me in, but until you're in that position, I'll ignore you thank you very much dot final edit, this will be my final edit. Thank you all for your support, but all I will say is, it's time for me to make some decisions. I hacked into my wife's Facebook account, childish and immature I'll admit, but I did it nonetheless, and I found things disturbing enough that I need to think long and hard about what I do next. I've given for the benefit of the doubt through this entire thing. 
Now a shadow had been cast and I'm questioning her more than ever before. Heartbroken is putting it mildly. It's time for me to work on my life and myself. Thanks to everyone and their interest. Story 2. I, 24M, have to decide whether or not to abandon my mother because of my toxic sister, and it's so heartbreaking, TLDR, at bottom the story is basically that I have a sister with untreated borderline personality disorder who will not get treatment, who is easily the most toxic person I've ever met. I never knew much about her until I was in ninth grade, and she and her husband broke up, so she came to live with us for around a year before finding another boyfriend. That year was easily the worst year of my life, with non-stop fighting between my mom, who I now support and who lives with me, and my sister. The police were called tens to hundreds of times that year because we were genuinely scared that she would kill someone due to her rages. In 2014, my mom and I moved to another state to get away from my sister, and my mom let my sister live in the house I grew up in. Fast forward seven years, my sister's boyfriend committed suicide to be fair, he also had a lot of mental health issues, she lives alone and the house is now in such bad condition that the homeowners association is coming after me and demanding me to have the house demolished. I was in college up until last year, so I really couldn't help with maintenance at all, or I would have. I am not legally the owner as I never had the house transferred to my name, but it would go to me if it went through probate. I grew up in extreme poverty, but went to a top 50 university with only about $8K in student debt and now have a salary of around $90K, plus my mom's income about $10k slash year helps as well. My sister receives something like $700 slash month in disability, so she can't pay anything towards this or very little. The ideal solution to this for me would be for me to put another mobile home on that property. However, the HOA will only accept ones with shingled roofs and vinyl slash wood siding akinur ones, which costs a lot more. Mobile home movers are also backed up, so even if I find an existing one at a cheaper price, there's no guarantee that I can actually have it moved. I'm happy to spend in the $10K, $40K range on this as I already live very frugally and have saved up around $25K already despite just graduating last year. Plus, I got promoted. So my salary is higher now than what it was last year. But it's looking like the project will end up costing upwards of $70-100K and I'll end up having to get a mortgage if I don't want my sister living with us. This leaves me with a few options. 1. Somehow find a cheap mobile home that can be moved or land with a trailer or something. Spend something like $25k, $40k and have it paid off within a year or two. This is the ideal option for me. I could put more towards maintenance. I know my mom is safe and happy, but I don't know if it's possible. I really hope it is, but I've been trying to find one for the past two weeks and it's just starting to seem unattainable at this point. Not to. Suck it up, get a chattel mortgage, and feel secure knowing my mom and sister have separate places to live, but be out $1,500 plus per month for probably 15 years. This seems so unrealistic to me, but it is possible. I just would be so resentful for so long. The only thing that could save me at that point would be getting lucky with stocks or something and paying the house off. This is honestly probably the worst option, but I could survive just fine this way. I could still save about $600 slash $700 per month, in fact, since I already live very frugally. Three, just live with my mom and sister together until my sister finds government housing. I can find a cheap mobile home or something else, which would possibly be years. My sister is hash one on the waitlist for a public housing complex in her area, but has been on the waitlist since her fiancé died in 2019. There's no telling when she'll actually be able to move out. I have no idea how I would handle it this time around. I was forking the first time and was very mentally unstable myself, but have done a lot of work on myself, so I may be able to handle it better. But I honestly think I would end up leaving anyway. Four. Leave and let my mom and sister fend for themselves. I italicize this, because I feel like that's probably what I need to do at this point. My mom won't let my sister go homeless. She will invite her to live with us, and I don't think I can deal with that again. The only thing I can do is leave, but I will feel awful for my mom. She went through such horrible things growing up, and I was finally able to give her a secure, peaceful life. She said that the past seven years with me have been the best of her life, and a lot of her issues like panic attacks and insomnia have gone away completely. If I leave, I don't even know how much longer my mom would stay alive. 
I was suicidal by the end of my time living with my sister, which was only a year. And without me, I don't know what my mom would do. She 100% relies on me and is 7 years old, can barely walk or do anything without my help, and might not survive very long without me. I have a lot of resentment for my mom and have already sacrificed a lot to take care of her. I'm gay and never told her about my sexuality and seriously limited my romantic-slash-sexual experiences because of living with her. What happens if I seriously date someone? It would be too complicated with my situation. I'm agnostic-slash-atheist and pretend to be Christian around her, and there are many other things I hide from her and sacrifice, to avoid her feeling disappointed. My mom isn't abusive, I just don't want to show my true self around her, because it makes things easier. If I left, I could finally be myself and have a normal life if I left, but again, I would just feel so terrible, I hope to give. We're a good experience at the end of her life, but it's also true that she made bad choices throughout her life and should probably deal with the consequences herself. It just, again, is so heartbreaking, and I don't know what to do at this point. Money is very important to me now, as, like I said, I grew up in extreme poverty, and I hope to be wealthy one day. Before this situation happened, I saved over $2,000 a month. I pay the rent, but my apartment is cheap. So I could very quickly and easily become wealthy, and I don't feel like I should sacrifice that possibility just to know that my mom is safe. I am happy to pay $1.1040k for this, but $1.7100k plus is in the life-ruining range of debt that will prevent me from ever becoming wealthy. It is such a shame, because if this happened five years from now, I could have easily paid for it all. But that isn't how it happened so I don't know what to do. I talked to the president of the HOA, and he is willing to give me a little bit of extra time to figure this all out, but I feel so lost.